Hey everybody, it's Christina from Creations with Christina. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I thought I'd give you a tour of my craft room. I've done some updating and some rearranging and adding of, of a couple of things and even removing of a couple of things. So I thought I'd just give you a quick update. And yeah, so let's go ahead and get started with the tour. The first thing I'm gonna do is just give you a quick overview of my room so you can see how it's set up. So I have this great long countertop, which is what I use as my workspace. And then I have a built-in bookcase that my brother installed when he put, um, did this uh, construction for us. And then I have my main working space, which was always my desk, my craft desk. Uh, but that's changed now into a, kind of an office desk because I find myself when I'm crafting, working on the other side of my room. Now that you've seen what my room looks like in a complete overview, let's go ahead and I'll show you what um, I keep in all of my different areas of my craft room and how I'm storing stuff. Let me just give you a warning. I am filming on my phone, so if it's a little bit shaky, I apologize. I will try my best to keep things as steady as I possibly can. I'm gonna start off my craft room tour in this section of my craft room. I pretty much always start my craft room tours over here. And one of the changes that you'll see um, right off the bat is right in the section right here used to be my Alex drawers. I removed the Alex drawers. They went into the storage room behind me and I moved my printer table, which sits right on the edge or ledge as you come up the stairs, and it holds all of my printers. I have my um, small Epson printer, my Canon printer, and a regular printer on here, as well as at the very bottom, I have my Silhouette Cameo, as well as some paper for copying. And at the very bottom underneath is where I slid in my really large uh, watercolor uh, watercolor and paper books because I just didn't have room in my drawers that were big enough or they just took up a lot of space. On the floor is just a package that I received in the mail today. And then on the wall here, this is my stamp and storage ink caddies that fit into the calyx units. And I spray painted these white um, a while back. But one change I made was, first of all, they're hanging on the wall now. So I added brackets and hung them on the wall. And yes, I purposely did it so that they were staggered like that because I could not get it when I was hanging them by myself to, so that they were all like in a straight line. So, so I figured why not just go staggered and nobody will ever know. Well, I do, and now you do. But anyway, those are my ink um, storage units. And like I said, they moved to that area. And now we're gonna go over and do a little close up of my built-in bookcase. On the very top shelf um, in the corner, I have uh, some refill, ink refills. And then I have my little displays. These are just acrylic um, displays from, this one I know came from uh, Home Goods. And then I bought two smaller versions of that on Amazon. And this is where I keep my little sponge daubers. I have the uh, one for each of my Distress Oxide inks and they're labeled on the side and then also on the top to tell me what the color is. And down in the very end there, Right there, I have a picture of my son from one of his birthday parties. On the second shelf, I have a basket here that is filled with all of my Cricut Joy uh, vinyl and iron-on and so on. And on the very end here, I have my boxes of infusible ink. And then over in this section, this is kind of a new section. This is um, all of my vinyl. It's just plain vinyl. It's not iron-on or anything like that. And what we did was we bought PVC piping and cut it down to, I think it's 10 inches, and use those to sort my vinyl. And I really love how this is. I could see the colors, I could see everything so much better than I did before when it was just shoved in a cabinet. And what we did to kind of make a little barrier so it didn't, the, the vinyl didn't roll or the tubes didn't roll all the way across, is we just put a piece of wood in the shelf or in the, uh, yeah, the shelf with a bracket just to hold it in place. So I really love this system and I love that I could see everything and it's you know more visible. On the bottom shelf, this binder right here is my color swatch binder. I just, everything's still the same system that I used before. I just switched out the binder. And then I have some Tim Holtz uh, uh, craft pads as well as some six by six paper pads. And then this right here is my Distress Oxide inks. They're being held in the nail polish uh, stands and I'm not sure I'm really loving this system. It First of all, it takes up a lot more room than I would like, but every once in a while I'll hit one and then it's like a domino effect and they all fall over. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this system. I may do something else and I'm also not 100% loving that they're tilted. I, I, I like the idea, but 
I'm not sure if tilting and having the ink all flow to one side is a good idea. So this is probably gonna be modified in some way in the future. A new addition to my room is a storage unit from Target. This is just uh, similar to the Ikea Calyx, but this one is from Target. It's a two by six system. And on the very top, I have a sublimation printer, which is a new uh, purchase for me and also a new hobby. I am absolutely loving it. And then I have a wooden uh, magazine holder. And in that magazine holder, I just keep my thing of sublimation paper. And then moving down, I have um, the six, six bins. So I'm just gonna start at the top and we'll go down one side and then over the other. All right, starting in the top one, this is where I keep everything that I can use for sublimation and um, vinyl iron on and all that kind of stuff. So I have t-shirts and these washcloths that I bought to practice sublimation on. I have um, a big bulky sweatshirt down the bottom. It just looks like I have a ton, but there's a big bulky, bulky sweatshirt down there. And then I also have some of the uh, Cricut uh, t-shirts in here as well for playing with the, the infusible ink, but also with, with the uh, sublimation. And then going down into this one, this one is kind of a bin of all things that I uh, want to alter. Uh, some of these things I've had for quite some time and just never got around to doing anything with them. So I got some signs. I have um, some different types of projects like these little wood uh, chips that I want to use to make ornaments for the holidays. And then I just picked these up on Amazon. They're wooden um, rolling pins that I saw some cute decorations for. So where you paint them and then add a sentiment on it onto it. So all of that is just kind of things that I want to alter and, and play around with. The bottom one is mugs and tumblers. These are all things that I can use the uh, permanent vinyl on. So I have just these mugs that I got or tumblers that I got from Walmart and some various types of mugs. These I think I purchased on Amazon and I think there's even, yeah, there's a dollar store mug in here. So those are all just things that I can use with the permanent uh, vinyl. All right. So the bottom one is the next one over is all sublimation mugs. There are just um, white mugs that you can use to uh, print onto, but they have a special coating for printing. So I have those in here, and then I also have the uh, wraps that you use to put around the mug when you're uh, pressing, or in my case, I use a toaster oven to transfer the ink onto the mug. This one is filled with sublimation tumblers. I have some wine cups, some 16 ounce tumblers, and I recently just picked up some mason jar uh, tumblers that you can do sublimation on. So that was what I keep in here. And then the next one up from that one is different types of sublimation projects I could work on. They have coasters. I have a couple odds and end things for sublimation projects. I have uh, sublimation uh, mouse pads and key rings and stuff like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and talk about the rest of my craft room. So one thing I just wanted to mention is my cabinetry. We used kitchen cabinets. They're by a company called Homecrest and they're painted in a color called Willow. And my countertops are all done in a quartz countertops. I don't remember the, the uh, name of them, but they are just a white countertop with a gray vein going through them. And it worked, it worked out perfectly because I just picked out what I thought would function best for my craft room. One of the other changes I made in my craft room is that I changed my crafting desk into an actual, just a working desk. I no longer craft from here. I did find even when I was crafting, I was never sitting here except for when I was filming videos, but I was working on, I work on the other side in uh, um, where I have my big long countertops is where I found myself working the most. The first thing I just want to uh, tell you is my chair, it was, it's, it's coming off a little bit of a navy blue, but it's more of a darker kind of teal color. And I got this at Home Goods. It is a countertop height d uh, desk or chair rather. And then I just have a throw that my sister gave me for Christmas on my chair. I'm gonna start on the right side of my desk and I go through all of the cabinets. Now I do have, or the drawers rather, and, but I do have a few crafting supplies left in here just because I didn't have space for them and you'll see that in a second. This top drawer is kind of my office drawer and my, my secret stash of candy. But I keep in here my remote controls, some pens and pencils, I have uh, scissors, just some mints, gotta have hand lotion around, and some uh, blank birthday cards just uh, for sending out when I don't have 
um, a card made. I have a lighter in here for lighting my candle. And then I also have a couple of rulers. This next drawer, the second drawer down, is kind of my tech supply drawer. I keep things in here like my extra mouse, some wires, chargers, and that kind of thing. And then the very bottom drawer is actually remain the same. The only thing that's missing are the containers that I was um, using in here, but I did switch, I just switched them out and just kept it without the containers. And this still has all my cardstock for card making. I have my colored cardstock. I have half uh, sheets of 110 pound cardstock. I have some card bases made and some envelopes. In this middle drawer, it's, one the it's it's not very deep so i have to find some containers that i can use in here but right now what i have in here is a calculator a notebook i have this little uh, template for 2021 calendars that i use in my bullet journal i found that on etsy i use these little tim holtz uh, tins that are for like ink and re-inkers and stuff i just took the lid off and that is perfect for keeping all my post-it notes and then i have another one that just has some random office supplies like another calculator some tape um, I have a circle uh, template back here because I use that in my bullet journal. And then back here are just some bags that I use for my little desktop garbage can that I have on my work desk. On the left side of my desk in the top drawer is where I just have some file folders that have some uh, personal information in it. I have my mouse pad for my... Uh, my laptop, which this is one that I sublimated with my name on it. And I just keep that here because I don't always need that mouse pad. Usually I just use the tracker on my, my laptop. And then down in the bottom here, this is the only cabinet that's in this area. And down here is all of my card stock. And I believe this was in my last video. I think I did this, uh, moved this a while ago. And I just added a, a, a deeper shelf here. And then all of my colored card stock is in here. They're all in the job ticket holders. This whole top shelf is uh, my color card stock and some of my um, neutral colors. And then down at the bottom is more specialty kind of paper, things like laminating pouches. I have labels, uh, sticker paper, and then some extra craft paper because they didn't fit up in the top shelf. And then on top of my desk, I usually have my laptop sitting here, charges here. Uh, it's downstairs right now. I have my microphone for doing voiceovers my camera that I was planning on using for today's video, but the battery was dead on it, my little carry case or my holding case for my headphones, my computer with my keyboard, and my keyboard right now is up here. But I have this uh, whiteboard, desktop whiteboard, which I love this thing. I actually have a couple of them, some color uh, codes on here, and I keep my, my markers for my dry erase. And then I have my mouse over there. And then I have, it's not really an extra long, um, I think that's what they call them, extra long mouse pad. It is just kind of a medium, but it's a little larger. So I can keep my mouse or my keyboard on it and my mouse and then I have it all nice and clean there. So there you go. That is how I have my desk organized. It's really simple and makes it pretty clean and easy for me to focus really more on work than Playing with my craft supplies and this is the section that i usually just refer to as my workspace this is where i'm actually doing all of my crafting anymore i'm going to go over the countertop area last but there's just a quick overview and we're going to go ahead and do a nice dive into the cabinets and what i keep in all of the cabinets right next to the cabinets i do have my tripod which i had already to film today's video i have a roll of butcher paper that i need for when i'm sublimating or using the uh, Cricut infusible ink and then an extra long quilting ruler and then this is a corner cabinet a half cabinet edge cabinet I don't know what they call this this cabinet but um, it's an awkward shape because it's not a full uh, it's kind of like at a diagonal but what I keep in here is all of my HTV my heat transfer or iron on vinyl and then down at the bottom is where I have all of my sewing uh, supplies I have my sewing machine fabric uh, thread, needles, that kind of stuff is down there. Then this is my corner cabinet. And in here is where I have just kind of random things. On the top shelf, I have uh, 12 by 12 paper, extra thing of wipes for cleaning stamps, my masking tape for vinyl, and just some other random things like little, little sidekick here. In the back I have felt. So there's all different types of supplies in here. And on the very bottom is where I keep my, uh, 
Easy Press, my Cricut Easy Press, that's what I use for sublimating. I don't have a big heat press, although I'd love to get one one of these days. And then I have the heat pads for using the Easy Press. These two are the Cricut brand. And then this one right here is one I made, which I have a video and I'll post that below if you guys wanna check that out. And I use that one the most. And then on the other side, I have two big blue bins. One of them is filled with chalk paint and the other one is filled with different types of, of stain and um, smaller tubes of chalk paint. And then I have this little bucket right here in the front that has my hot glue gun and different types of, or the hot glue stick and then the other types of glue. Right next to my corner cabinet is a four drawer section and it's got two um, smaller drawers at the top and two larger drawers at the bottom. I'm gonna start at the top and we'll work our way down. In this top drawer is where I keep a lot of my stamping supplies. I have my stamping blocks. They're all just sit in one of these acrylic trays that when I get acrylic trays, I usually get them from Home Goods or TJ Maxx or someplace like that because they're much cheaper. And this one's like the cosmetic because it has different uh, sections in it. And then this one over here has things like my lint roller, my, what do you call that? What is that thing called? Brayer, that's it. And then I also have a measuring tape, which I have two of these and I use them all the time. I have things like masking tape, my heat transfer tape, my little bucket here for my stamp uh, cleaner. And then in the back is where I have my stamp press boards, my score buddy, and a couple of other little odds and end supplies in there. The second drawer is a mix of a whole bunch of different things. I have things like my pit markers, my um, archival inks, my mini inks are all in the little Tim Holtz uh, trays. I have another Brer here. I have things like my embellishment mousse, my colored pencils by Nouveau, and just, it's kind of a mix. There's, I think there's glaze in here. There's a bunch of different things. I have watercolor uh, uh, paints in there as well. Moving down to the next drawer, I have my carry case that has my polychromal pencils. My Prismacolor pencils I actually gave to my mom because she likes to doodle in color, so I let her have those because I found myself using these more. I've got my Pink Fresh Studio watercolors. And then in this little uh, clear container, which I think is one from the dollar store, I have my um, ink applicator tool. This is a brand new one. And there's a couple, one in here too that are open, some of the foam, as well as the little felt pieces for when you're working with alcohol inks. I use dividers. These are just white M design dividers that I got from Amazon. And they're great for just separating my drawers. This bin right here is just one of those white bins from Target that is the Room Essentials, I think, brand. And in here, just random bags, tags, <laughs> and labels and that kind of thing. And that also in the back there as well. I have a whole bin that has um, tags in it and then some card uh, envelopes and supplies there. And then in the bottom drawer is where I have my mink machines. This drawer is the perfect depth for keeping both of my machines here. I have a larger one on the bottom, my smaller one on the top. I have all my rolls of foil that used to be hanging on my wall. I took them down. And then I have my magnetic board. And underneath there, I have all different types of foiling products, as well as my heat transfer gel. And there's also a toner uh, refill back there too. The next section is a three drawer section. So I have a regular size drawer and then two really deep drawers. We're gonna start with the top drawer here. And this one has a bamboo utensil holder that was in my kitchen. And I kind of repurposed it up here to hold different types of like hand tools. I have tons of scissors. I'm not sure why I have so many little tiny pairs of scissors. I have my picks for when I'm doing uh, vinyl and I have like little spatulas. Got lots of tweezers, cutting um, exacto knives and that kind of thing in here, my scrapers. And then towards the back, I keep my little, uh, this is a nail polish holder for when you're doing your nails, but it's also a great thing to stick your little pieces of vinyl uh, when you're taking it off with one of your picks into there. Another one of these little measuring tapes because I really like it. <laughs> and some floral wire back there is my um, tiny attacher. 
got the supplies for my tiny attacher here. And then I also have rulers and extra scissors that I don't use very often there. And on the side is where I keep my spatulas as well as just some other random tools. In the next drawer, this pretty much has stayed the same. Uh, it's all of my stamping. I have this one of those big clear acrylic holders in here that's got the divider for the two sections and I have all of my stamps sorted by company. At least in this drawer, I have my oversized stamps on this side. My Tim Holtz ones are in the job ticket holders that I cut down. And then I have the larger Avery L pockets for my larger size stamp sets. And then for my regular size stamp sets, I use the same method, but these were, um, these most of these are just cheaper versions of Avery L from Amazon. And then the front here is more um, of the larger pockets with the background stamps. And then in the very bottom drawer, I have another one of those clear acrylic containers that have the two sections. I keep my larger uh, dies for die cutting right in the front there. But I have, on this side over here, I have all of my dies that are also in the Avriel style pockets. And they're separated by uh, category, but then within that category, they're separated by brand. So I have those here. And then on this side, I have all of my uh, holiday themed uh, stamps like the fall and Christmas and, and so on. On the side over here, I just had this clear container that's got a couple uh, random Tim Holtz things like some embossing folders and dies. They're just right there. I have circle uh, stencils for, I use these two for when I'm doing bullet journaling. This right here is a tonic. I was subscribed for a little bit to the tonic craft kit. So that's just one of those uh, binders that have a couple kits in it. And then I just keep my stencils just on the side here. I don't have them in any particular order. I do try to keep them in their original packaging, um, but that only lasts for so long. And then the front, I have my embossing folders, which I did put also into the Avery L package. But some of the larger ones, they're just you know sitting here uh, towards the back. And then I have some of the Tim Holtz 3D uh, embossing folders here as well. I'm moving on to the next section of drawers. This one is another two smaller drawers to a bigger drawer section. And in this top one, I have different types of card making supplies like glue, spray bottles, um, tubes of glue, tape rollers, or runners rather, some white gel pens and different types of gel pens, stamp cleaner, that all that kind of stuff there. And then the back, I've got more scissors because I apparently have a problem for scissors and rulers. And then I also have my little spray bottle. And, um, and then I have my current bag of baby wipes that I use mostly not for cleaning stamps. I use them for cleaning my hands. And then on the side here is where I have my embossing dabber because it does need to, it is recommended that they stay um, with the liquid towards the foam at the top. So it, it fits in there perfectly. All right, in this drawer is more of my embossing supplies. I have the white or the clear acrylic trays again from probably, actually I know these came from Home Goods because Home Goods they were a recent purchase um, maybe a year or so ago. And they hold all of my embossing powders. So this one right here has all embossing powders as well as some reinkers that um, I just, for some reason I'm keeping them there. This one over here has my ultra thick embossing powder, my little spoons for when I'm scooping out embossing powder, my static bag for embossing, as well as my glaze, embossing glaze there. And then I have my little Swiffer wipes for clear, uh, Swiffer towels, I guess, for cleaning up. My favorite inks are here. I keep my Versamark, my Gina K, and my Versafine ink. And then in the back, I have these three little containers. This is... Um, these two are old Stampin' Up, it's black and silver, and then I have a Ranger sticky embossing powder and my <laughs> Distress Glitter. And then I also put in here my heat gun. This is my uh, Milwaukee heat gun, which I've had for quite some time. And then I have my heat tool back there, as well as some random labels from previous storage in here. <laughs> Moving down to this drawer, this is a little bit of a deeper drawer, and I actually converted this to move all of my ribbon into one spot before I had it in my Alex drawer or back in storage. So I moved everything into here. So this has all of my ribbon, my twine, my thread, or anything like I that I would use for um, card making or doing home decor projects. 
And then the very bottom one is miscellaneous tools. I have things like my crap -a dial um, some punch boards, although I moved my punch boards into a different location, some regular punches, paper punches, and I keep these, these are iris containers, and I have like, I think there's six of them in here, and each one has different things in it, like this is my foiling quill pens, I have my fuse tools, some punch boards, and different, different types of things like that, and here I also have things like this bag of old brads that I keep around, some We Are Memory Keepers, uh, corner choppers, and back here I even have some punch boards. Then this very last cabinet right here is just a nine inch cabinet and we could have actually extended the countertop right to the wall but I do have an outlet over here. So in that section is just where I keep my roll of paper toweling and my big cutting mat or cutting uh, paper cutter there. But in this cabinet and hopefully I can get a nice view for you because this is hard to film. On the side here is where I keep my Cricut cutting mats and they're just hung up with a 3M hook which I use the somebody suggested in one of my videos to use the velcro style and they are amazing that they have not budged since so whoever that person was thank you so much because that's been great and then I even have even on the other side of the cabinet another section and um, for there I have my silhouette mats down in the bottom I have a silhouette mat that's in use down here I have my big scoreboard my light board from Cricut, the drawer that act or the shelf that actually belongs in here, and then some punch boards. I have like my one, two, three punch board. I have other punch boards in the back. And this over here is my Tim Holtz uh, paper trimmer. And now we're gonna talk about everything that I keep on my countertops. But I'm gonna start here on the wall. These are the ribbon shelves from Ikea. Well, actually these two are from Ikea. These two are from Amazon. And on here is where I keep my alcohol inks and my Distress Oxide sprays. And now we'll just go ahead and talk about my countertop. Yes, I have a toaster oven. This is uh, actually what I use for sublimating my tumblers and mugs. And that's here. I don't keep it plugged in. I only plug it in when I'm using it. I have my lamp, which I've had probably since I moved into this craft room. I have two of these. And I bought those at Hobby Lobby years ago. On the wall is two... Um, Nail polish holders, actually I purchased, it was a set of six, and these come in handy for storing those little tiny bottles like your um, Distress, uh, not Distress, your Nouveau drops and powders and your stickles or anything like that. This right here is a little garbage can that I talked about the bags that were in my drawer, and that is from Lots of Style, which you can order on Amazon or directly from them, and I love this. It's great for just uh, having right here at the desk and I can throw my little scraps and stuff in. Next to that is where I store my washi tape. These are in the washi tape holders that you can get at Michael's and they're nice and filled, but I did purge down my washi tape quite a bit and only kept the kind um, that I like the most. And then these were just recent purchases because I like the thinner tape for my bullet journal. And then up here is a cup that Ethan got me a couple years ago for my birthday. That's my son, uh, if you didn't know. And then the, all of my paintbrushes are kept right in here. I have a um, new uh, device, which is my Alexa. And I have it on Do Not Disturb right now. But I'm going to turn it on. And one of the newest additions to my craft room is being able to turn my studio lights on and off. Alexa. Turn off the studio. Okay. You can see how dark it gets in here. So we're just gonna go ahead and turn those back on. And I love that it's just so simple that I could just turn them on and off, especially when I get downstairs and realize I forgot to turn them off, I could just yell at her and tell her to turn on, turn them on or off. Next to that, I have my heat tape. This is a big dispenser with the gold heat tape, which I'm not 100% fond of. I much prefer the Cricut blue tape, which I have um, in a regular tape dispenser right here. I have this little caddy that you can get from Cricut that holds all your different types of tools. And then right next to that is my Cricut maker. In front of there, I keep my trim, my Fiskars trimmer, my glass mat, as well as my uh, cutting mat. So one's glass and one's just the, you know, the rubbery, the rubbery kind. And then right up on the wall are four more sets or four more rows of the nail polish holders that have my Nouveau drops in there. Right next to my Cricut Maker is where I have another one of the washi tape holders from Michaels, but this one has my gelatos down in the bottom. So I just, you know, separated them and put them into the three little sections there. 
I've got my Cricut pens in here. And then I also have my Real Crush, Real, no, my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. And then on the very top, I have one of these little three section, I believe that's a utensil holder that I just recently purchased these, this from um, Amazon. And that holds my different types of blending brushes on the top there. Right next to that is another one of my lamps. And then here I have a water bottle that actually I'm gonna be filling up with water just so that I have access to uh, water for if I'm coloring or if I need to fill a water bottle or anything like that. And then I have next to that my uh, 12 by 12 acrylic drawer, which I got at Michael's. This is a, a new purchase. In here, well, on the top, actually, I keep my Gemini Junior. And then the bottom drawer, I keep my plates for my Gemini. So I could just pull that right off there and use it when I need it. This drawer right here is where I keep my Tombow markers. And then in the top drawer, I have my Acrylograph pens from Archer and Olive and my Distress Crayons. Then next to that, I have my Cricut Joy. Scott got me the carry case for my Cricut Joy, so I keep that um, cased in right here. And then next to that is a fairly new purchase that I picked up because I needed to make my filming process a little bit easier. So I bought an, it's called an Archon mount. It holds my phone and my iPad so I can film from there rather than having to use different types of camcorders and transferring because that process takes a very long time and I'm trying to make it a little bit easier so that I could post more frequently. And then next to that is my candle and then I have my Copic markers. That is my full craft room. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, the tour. And I'm, again, I'm sorry if it's really shaky, but it was easier to film on my phone rather than wait for my battery to charge. All right, everybody, see you next time.